Hey, what's going on YouTube? Will here from All Electric back again with another software update video for my white Model 3 here. So that newest software that we just got is 2020.24.6.1. In this video, I'm gonna show you all the release notes in detail, go into all the new settings and features, and do a test drive. So let's jump right in. Huge thank you goes out to our Grandma Tool, Nicola Pro, and Drone Quote supporting this channel at the all-electric tier. Click the link down below and support this channel for as little as a dollar a month. Okay, so let's jump right into these release notes. Let's see what is new on here. We have traffic light and stop sign control beta. No longer requires explicit driver confirmation to push down the gear stock to continue straight through an intersection for a green light when there is a lead vehicle ahead of you. Okay, we're gonna have to test that out. Please continue to pay attention, of course. All right, backup camera improvements. You can now view video streams coming from the side repeater cameras, as you see down here, which is awesome. So now you have complete visibility. Well, I guess not technically 100% complete, but pretty close when the back cameras, that's a great feature to add. So dash cam viewer improvements. To make sentry mode easier to view, you can now see a red dot along the video scrubber. So along this thing in the bottom part of the screen, see the red dot there. So I have noticed that like, ever since they put the sentry mode videos in the car, you have to, it's a 10 minute clip, but you have to go to the end to see, you know, if somebody walked close to your car or something like that or tripped it. So really cool that they put a little red dot here to let you know what actually tripped the sentry mode. Tune-in improvements, this update will improve the usability and discoverability of tune-in stations. So if you use tune-in, there are some improvements there. Thank you, Elon, what we've been waiting for for a long time, walk-away door lock improvements. So now you have the option to disable walk-away door lock when your vehicle is parked at home. Thank you so much, this has been so annoying. You leave your phone, your car is parked in the garage and you leave your phone in the house and you can't get into your car. So really frustrating there. First world problems for sure, but really nice to see that they added that. Okay, we have new language support there, Portuguese. So real cool for anybody who speaks Portuguese out there. Cabin camera, here we go. This camera that is above the rear view mirror. Help Tesla continue to develop safer vehicles by sharing camera data from your vehicle. This update will allow you to enable in-cabin camera above the rear view mirror. If enabled, Tesla will automatically capture images and a short video clip just prior to a collision or safety event. So I do like this. I, I do think that this is important, but I do like this little disclaimer down here at the bottom. Note, cabin camera images and video clips will not be associated with your VIN to protect your privacy. Let's jump in here to some of these settings and let's see what those look like uh, before we actually go out for a drive and test out this new traffic light uh, with no confirmation. So let's check out the backup camera. We're in my garage and I have a lot of junk in my garage. So we got a little up arrow here. So we see at the bottom here, let's go ahead and swipe up. And now it turns on the repeaters. So you can see, which we get a really cool, um, it displayed the car. Let's see if we swipe down, yep. And swipe back up, you see it displays the car with the blue area of what the camera is actually capturing. So this area over here is um, my shoe rack, and this area over here is the car door is open. So if we actually close this car door a little bit, you can see it uh, looking over at the other red Model 3 that we have. So really cool. I do like this. We'll close this door, put it into drive, and you can you can drive with this on. Close this camera out and then put it in reverse. So it looks like I've automatically, looks like it'll save. If you want these two repeaters on and you put it into reverse, it'll save it there. So let's swipe this down. So now we just have the single backup camera. We'll go ahead and put it in park. So we get no rear view camera screen and then we'll go ahead and put it in reverse. So it saves that because you swipe up and you like this view and it's in park. I do like how it saves uh, kind of your camera settings. So go ahead and put it in reverse and it pops up all three cameras. So really nice to see that they included that in there. So we'll put it in park now. So we have our dash cam viewer improvements and my car was just in for service. So we have this here, this video clip here. You see this red dot here, that's new. So we can scrub all the way to the event 
that actually activated the sentry mode. Probably this guy standing right here in front of my car. And so that red dot there must have been when this individual walked right in front of the car. So really nice. I like that little dot feature that it gives us right there. Walk away door locks. So we have that on, but now we can hit exclude home. So walk away door locks is disabled at this location. So I am parked at my house right now. So it is disabled really really great to see that allow cabin camera under data sharing i'm going to leave that at no for now okay let's jump into tune in i haven't been using tune in so i'm not sure if anything is different if you have used tune in and you notice any difference let me know down in the comment section below okay so that is it we've covered all these things within the car and now let's go out for a drive and let's check this traffic light with no confirmation let's see if we can get a car in front of us and let's go check that out. Okay, so we're coming up to the red light here. It does identify down here that it is in fact a red light and it is slowing down. I do have two cars in front of me before the red light is. This line up here is currently red. I'm not touching anything, no accelerator or deer stock and it now is green allowing me to pass through because I have a car in front of me. So really cool and definitely new for this software update. Previously, anytime you pass through an intersection, you would have to acknowledge via the gear selector pulling down or pressing the accelerator pedal. So now they have lifted that requirement in if you have a car in front of you. So now I am approaching another intersection with a light right here and I'm not pressing down anything. I am following a vehicle and it is green on the center display. I, telling me I'm gonna go straight through. So no requirement as far as passing through the light there. Really cool to see. Approaching a stoplight now. Use accelerator pedal or gear stock to continue. So it looks like it is gonna stop for us and we are not following anybody so we do have to confirm before it'll turn green. Stopping for traffic control in 300 feet. So let's see what happens. I'm thinking that I'm still gonna have to acknowledge because it only specifically said traffic light. So here we go, use accelerator or gear stock to continue. So I do have to go ahead and acknowledge that so I can continue. And then we get the takeover immediately, so cruise is unavailable. So it does, it, uh, it is unable to perform that intersection there. So here we go, we're on the opposite direction of what we just were, stopping at the stop sign here. And we do still have to confirm through the stop sign because you can see it is a two-way stop. So just this crossing traffic has to stop and none of these this other traffic has to stop going this way. So I do just uh, do my best to look both ways and then press the accelerator pedal to cross. And now this way it is able to hold the autopilot and does not disengage autopilot. So it does not say take over immediately going the opposite direction there. Well, I hope you guys really enjoyed that 2020.24.6.1 preview, but I have something really cool to show you that I just got my hands on, and this is a Tasmanian cooler. Now, this cooler is definitely a premium product, and it is rather expensive, but it is really cool and awesome because it fits really perfectly in the Model 3 front trunk and the Model Y front trunk as it is designed to fit in there. Now this cooler is massive. You can fit, I think it's 48 cans of your preferred beverage. We can say soda, beer, whatever you prefer. 48 cans, almost 50 cans in this cooler. I mean, it's huge. Now talk about tailgate party. You can do that right from your front trunk with this cooler and it actually comes with these ice packs so you can pack it full of anything that you would like to drink. Now the best part about this cooler, it was a designed by a Tesla fan so they know you want it to fit in the front trunk so it fits in the front of a Model 3 or a Model Y and you can easily throw it on your shoulder and be on your way. Now what's also great about this cooler is it will actually fit in the sub trunk so underneath your trunk in the Model 3 and the Model Y. So very easy to throw this when you're going on vacation. If you guys are interested, I'll throw a link for this down in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. Please share this video with a friend. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button.
As always, I will see you guys in the next one.